everyone, I'm Miranda Frank and today I'll be talking about the freshwater biome. Now we know that the earth is covered in lots of water and 97% of it is salty, but humans like you and me need fresh water to survive as well as many other animals since drinking too much salt water can technically kill you. But not to worry, global warming is happening and glaciers are sure to melt, which contain a lot of fresh water. Now, where can we find fresh water besides a giant iceberg that sunk the Titanic? I know there are five lakes in Northern America called the Great Lakes, which actually contain a majority of the available fresh water on the planet, 20% to be exact. There are rivers too, like the Colorado, Arkansas, Missouri, and Mississippi rivers. The difference between most freshwater areas is that they can be still water, like lakes and ponds, or fast water, like rivers and streams. The weather around here is nice and cool, not super hot, but it might be a little bit too cold since there are mountains around here, which is common because a lot of snow from the mountains is also what can make fresh water. Let's try some of the fresh water. Ew, 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 ew. Okay. That fresh water is a total hoax that tasted horrible. That was one limiting factor. <laughs> Get it? Like, limiting factors? That can exist in a biome. Um, okay, so some other limiting factors would be floods and landslides from the mountains. I mean, take a look around. Right? Um, well, the plants growing here would also need to adapt to the environment since, you know, if they were growing near fast water, they would need to hold on to the rocks or on the ground so they would prevent from being washed away. So producers in fresh water would be algae or lily pads which float on the water, moss which stick to the rocks around them, as well as pondweed and eelgrass which are just plants growing naturally in the water. And trees, obviously, but time for the best part. The animals! First, we have the primary consumers. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> because they're primary. <laughs> that means they come first. <sighs> Whatever. All right, so the food web will show us which animals are at the top of the food chain and where all the energy is flowing up to and the energy that they will get from eating all the animals, of course. So we have to start on the bottom where the producers are, which I already mentioned, and um, the primary consumers, like I said, which are animals that only eat one thing, plants. Most herbivores in freshwater areas are adorable muskrats and beavers, which technically eat wood, and fish like trout and salmon eat plants, as well as little turtles like the commonly known red-eared turtle. He's awesome. I love red-eared turtles. I want one as a pet. So. The next kinds of animals on our list are the secondary consumers, which are the carnivores, because they eat the primary consumers. They would have to be a wide variety of amphibians, like frogs, which eat insects. So, technically speaking, they are carnivores. They would have to be some bullfrogs and leopard frogs. And salamanders, too, are amphibians, like the spotted salamander or the tiger salamander. And birds, like ducks and swans. Duh! There are also some carnivorous fish out there, 
like the commonly known piranhas. Well, another carnivore, although you might not want to think about it that way, is a flamingo, which eat fish and maybe frogs if you think about it. A cool fact I want to point out are the animals adapting to their environment, the behavior of the wildlife out here, which is another limiting factor. Well, I guess they would have to be like how otters have little webbed feet so they can swim around. And also, frogs blending into the environment. Think about it this way. Take a look at the leopard frog. Show the leopard frog. And take a look at this red-eyed tree frog. Here's the thing. Since it has a lot of bright colors and the leopard frog is totally green and brown all over, means that it can blend into the murky green and brown water in the freshwater biomes. But this little guy, he lives in the rainforest in the trees. And that means that bright colors could mean, don't touch me, I'm poisonous and stuff like that. Or he just uses the green on his back to blend into the leaves. All right, so, the last animals on our list are the tertiary consumers, which eat the meat of the meat. Nah, get it? Because they're meat eaters, but they get eaten by other meat eaters. Anyway, the tertiary consumers would have to be alligators, you know, which eat birds and frogs and whatever they get their hands on. And there are also a ton of snakes out here. So watch out. There's the cottonmouth and the keelback. There is also a giant bird that looks like a flamingo, and its beak is literally meant for eating frogs. It's called a heron, but it's not super well known around here. Anyway, another difference I want to clarify about alligators and crocodiles is that alligators will usually live in fresh water while crocodiles will live in salt water. That's why you see more alligators in America, like Florida. <coughs> Florida. <coughs> and you see more crocodiles in salt water areas like Africa and Australia. Okay, one last random fact about amphibians. There's a highly endangered kind of amphibian that looks like a lizard and a salamander and it has gills on the side of its head, but it can breathe out of water as well. It's called an oxaloidal. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Anyway, the word oxaloidal in Aztec translates to water dog, and they have the unbelievable ability to regrow anything. Sure, a, a lizard can regrow its tail or you know, whenever it's cut off, but the oxaloidal can regrow its leg, its eye, or its own heart. This highly endangered amphibian is also being looked at to see if we could do some research on humans, see if they can regrow a heart or two, but nothing's really come up yet. All right, that's it for now. I'm Miranda Frank. Be brave, stay kind to nature, and it won't kill you. Humans are another limiting factor, by the way. <laughs>